What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Yakuza Fan Podcast for January 4th, 2017. 2017. I did can't it. believe it. This is episode number right year. This is episode number 18. And we, we took a little bit of a break yeah, over was, Christmas. Where was last week's? Last week's was delayed to this week because we needed a Christmas break. Okay. It was a, it was a miracle. Baby Haruto Jesus was born. It was very magical. Right. Okay. Cal, it has been a long couple of weeks. With not a lot with not a lot happening, but it's been Christmas. It's been Christmas. It's been, it's been some news. There was New Year's. It there, is a new year. A lot's happened this year. Really, has it though? It's not for yet. us. Yeah, that's <laughs> very true. So we're currently in countdown mode to Yakuza Zero. I hope you guys are excited. I know I am. I'm already got a yeah. review copy. <laughs> I couldn't be more thrilled. Shouts out John over at Sega for sending that over. Expect a lot of content to be going up in the coming weeks. Uh, when no, we can. <laughs> January 11th. Uh, previews are allowed to go live, so expect some uh, more videos out then. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm currently playing through it for review. It, it's a ton of fun. Yeah, like I, if you play the I, Japanese I, version. Yeah, I, I'm not allowed to say too, too much about it, but I don't think anyone's going to get mad at me if I say it's so much goddamn fun. Yeah. It is the best. Okay, let's leave it at that for now, but I'm, I'm just having a blast. <sighs> it's, been, it's been a good year so far. <laughs> <laughs> Off to a good start. Yeah. Um... Cal, what? Since we started off this new year, mm-hmm. it is 2017 now. Mm-hmm. A lot has changed. A lot has not changed. What is- but I want to know for you personally. Okay. What have you been doing this week? And what are some of your New Year's resolutions? Resolution? Oh man, I don't want to be a better person. Okay. Check. Um, what have I been doing this week? Wow, I've been. Well, working. last last two weeks. Well, like yeah. Christmas, I had New Year's. Uh, New Year's was rough. Yeah. Because I stayed up all night drinking. Yeah, that's fair. And then... I crashed, okay. at, I crashed at 3 a.m. Yeah. I, I couldn't continue our adventure. Okay, so let me tell you guys the story. So um, I went to sleep at about mm, 7 in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> New Year's Day and got woken up at about 11.30. Yeah. No, it wasn't even. It was like 7.30 that I went to bed or 8 o'clock or something. Anyway, I got yeah. woken up like 11, 11.30. Two and a half hours of sleep anyway. So Seems I reasonable. step outside the bedroom door and slip you on the hardwood. Totally ate shit. I wasn't drunk anymore either. No. Um You just you I just, just slipped. slipped. It was just really slippery in one spot. You just, you just I was lost barefoot. It. Anyway, so I slipped and I slid into the wall and slammed my toe into the wall and oh, broke wow. my little toe. Do we know if it's actually broken? I'm pretty sure it's broken because it still really hurts. You need to and go this see a was doctor. Four days ago. You okay. were in Canada, you can afford the doctor. Oh, what is go the doctor see gonna it. do? Put uh, a tiny cast on my it? tiny toe. No, they're gonna give it a splint and maybe snap the bones oh, back into place. I'm it's not, fine. It's I don't know how toes work. Oh, it's fine. Um, I'm, well, I'm pretty sure it's broken. There's a chance it's good. just, what, badly bruised? bruised? I don't Sprained? know. It's probably broken. I, yeah. It slammed it I'm going to get you a whole anyway, new Anyway, so that, that was pretty That much. was your adventures of New yeah. Year's? And then I started a new job this week. Yes, uh, congratulations. You're now gainfully employed. Yeah. You're, you're what, librarian now? Head librarian? Uh, <laughs> assistant. Chief librarian? <laughs> assistant librarian. Assistant librarian. That's pretty good. <laughs> Who hasn't always wanted to be a librarian? Right? Like, like that's like everybody who grows every up nerd, without friends. Every nerd <laughs> dreams of being the librarian one day, I think. Yeah. Like, you got to be around all these books. You get to tell people what to do. You, you get to shush people and no one can get mad at you for it. <laughs> I got sent homework. I have to learn the rules to Settlers of Catan. Apparently, I've never played it, uh, which is weird because I usually like these would. kinds of games. But you think you would. I've never played it, so that's my homework. <laughs> I got work homework. That's fine. You know what? I, I think that I think that librarian is a good job for you. Yeah. I, I think that you can excel at that. Yeah. So that was pretty much it. That was. All right. Did, did, did you play any video games? Uh, I'm still trying to. Well, I'm You're still working I'm through playing, Pokemon. I'm playing Miku for review. Yes, that, that's another one that we've got sitting here. Right. Okay. Uh, which one is that? Um, Future Town. Okay. Hatsune Miku. Am we really going to talk about it? I think so. It's, I think it comes out in like a week, doesn't it? Pretty soon, yeah. I know. So, okay, well, I'm sure, I'm sure you can give your impressions. If not, I will go and cut these out okay. after the fact. Okay? Well, it's, it's very arcadey. Yeah? It's like the complete polar opposite of the, the Project Eva. Okay. Project Eva X. Okay. So you basically it's like, you know, your classic arcade. Yeah. Pick a song from the list. Okay. Um, yeah, we're okay. We're allowed to talk about it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we were just double checking. It's fine. December twenty sixth, uh, uh, previews yeah, are allowed well, to go up. So. Yeah, so it's it's like if you want, I if you wanted an arcade experience for Miku, this is yeah the game you want. Whereas 
Diva X was like there's a story and stuff. So okay. they're very different games. Now you reviewed Diva X for our yeah. channel, right? What did yeah. you give that? Was it a three, three and a half? Three and a half. I thought you were very kind to that game. Uh-huh. Diva X was not my kind of game. I, I feel like if I if I I think that if I bought that game, I would have been disappointed. It, remember though, these games sell for lower than. I, I understand that, but I always feel like Miku, especially Diva X, was one of those games where maybe if it was ten bucks, I would have picked it up. Uh-huh. But I know you had a bit more fun with it, and that's again that comes down to opinion and personality. Yeah. I just I, I have a hard time giving a free pass to some of the shenanigans that the Miku games do, especially yeah. that one. This one though, what what is this? I've already forgotten the name Future of it again. Tone. Future Tone. That's a good game. It is from what I've played, and it's, don't get me wrong, it's only been very brief, but from what I've played, it feels like you've gone into an arcade and you found a Miku arcade machine. And it's sort of like I mean the gameplay is very similar to the other to to Diva X. There's a few differences, but it it's very unimportant in the grand scheme of things. But it really comes down to the like this one is you you pick your songs and you play them. Whereas yeah. Divax was... There's no bullshit. It's there was, just... Yeah. The, if you want to unlock stuff, you, you get points. You spend them on the stuff you want to unlock. That, very, very simple. Okay. That, that is the one thing that I've noticed that I actually dislike. I don't want to know what I can unlock. I would rather have just a blank slate of shit mm-hmm. and then be surprised when I unlock something. Right. Which is what you got in Divax. Which I prefer. Me too. But I the major difference is if you don't really want to keep playing Miku because if you don't play Miku just for the sake of playing Miku because you like it there's yeah. no real reason to go back to Future Tone like continuously whereas Diva X had a, a narrative so you, you're going to want to come back and actually finish the story whereas I sat there and finished the story I don't know how much I'll put into Future Tone mm, by contrast true but it seems to me like the story wasn't that good though no it wasn't but it was something to finish I suppose there was an ending whereas you know this one's an arcade experience you just play it to unlock just more play, stuff. You just play it because you enjoy Get the high scores. But that's all I want. Like As someone who does like Miku and vocal aid music, yeah. that, that is way more appealing. Well, I don't, if you like vocal aid music, there's like 100 songs or I, something yeah, in this one. It's, like, it's there's so, so many songs. It is the most amount of songs I think I've ever seen in a music rhythm game. Like, it's for, especially for a home console release. Yeah. It is an insane amount of songs. It's well, like, it's, no, no. It's, well, it's is it like digital. 200 songs? No, it's about 100. Is it? like It's so many it's songs. It's digital only, right? Or, I, I think so. I, yeah, I don't know. You know what? Maybe we should find that out. Yeah, I think it's um, digital only because you have yeah. to buy the two packs, right? Yeah, there's two packs. You can buy them as a bottle. Anyway, it's mm-hmm. it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, but you'll have to wait and... Yeah, so hopefully we'll have a review going up uh, January 9th. Uh, that, that's the plan. So, Cal, you're writing the review yeah. uh, recording and I'll be editing video. Yeah. And so, yeah, look forward to that. Yeah. I don't know. I think that one's going to score fairly well. I, I worry that one's going to score better than Yakuza 6. Oh, spoilers! <laughs> Hey, oh, we we have been having long discussions in our Discord all day about the uh, the scoring system with Yakuza Six, and that is a game that is going to be polarizing for a lot of people. I think you are so harsh on you. I, don't, I am so harsh on video games, but you, only on certain ones because you're like near six out of five. Oh yeah, <laughs> which is I, like the shittiest. I game. am unapologetic with my near love, but near. I will say right now, near is a better game than Yakuza Six. Okay, that's. I've, a statement, but... Yeah, a correct statement. But Nier isn't as good as... you. Like, you're not critical of games that you, like... Once you oh, like no, game, no, no. You're so not critical of it. I, I disagree. There are a ton... Like, I love Yakuza 6. I really, really like that game. I love the Dragon Age. I love everything yeah, that it does. Why can't you insult, like, all the things that are wrong with Nier? Like, why can't oh, you... Oh, I can. This? But then you'd still but give the, it a 6 out of 5. But what is wrong with Nier? <laughs> yeah, exactly. See? Now, there's your, there's your problem you right away. You have to away. refinish it four times to get the real story? It's victory laps. Once you beat it once, and right at the end of the game, you unlock the best sword that, like, one-hits enemies. So after you finish it once, it's basically a victory lap. What about the fishing thing that everyone had a hard time with? I don't know why people had a problem you with You struggled that. with it, I, too. No, it I took didn't. you a while to figure that no, out. No, I didn't. That was r- immediately. The, o- the only issue with the fishing thing was the guy who gives you the fishing quest... Right at the very start, he's like, oh, you've got to go fishing to catch this mis- mythical fish. You know, he is standing at the end of a yeah, pier. Yeah, that took you forever to figure out. You were so mad. He's standing at the end of a pier next to a, a body of water that isn't the right one that you need to fish in. You need to go to the other side of town to find a secret beach hidden in a cave. Yeah. That's where you need to fish. Yeah, that that really messed you up and yeah, everyone it, else. And, and it did. 
But six out of five. Deeply. Six out of five. <laughs> yeah. I stand by that. Near, near is so good. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm a little biased. But yeah, exactly. I love it. But that's I my love point. It. Your reviews are bullshit. Reviews in general, people, are bullshit. They're opinions. Uh, we are having a discussion today about what it would be like to review something with no opinions and with no biases. And it's like y- Yakuza Six is a game. It has graphics. Sometimes there is music. Yeah. Like you, you. To be unbiased, you would not be able to comment on the quality or whether the graphics were even aesthetically pleasing because yeah. aesthetics are a personal choice. It's subjective. Somebody likes sprite yeah. art and thinks that's the pinnacle of art, whereas yeah. somebody else prefers CG or... Some, some people prefer 1997 PlayStation 1 graphics. Yeah. Those people are wrong. I know. You're wrong. <laughs> Those people are right. You know what? Bring back PlayStation 1 graphics. No! I love low poly. No! I hate low poly. poly. looks so good. Racing games, low poly. 60 frames a second, low poly racing games looks so good. Survival horror I'm, works I'm so done. much better. I'm as quitting low this poly. podcast. Oh, you're insane. Like, even I'm playing Pokemon, and it's like, these graphics would be so much better if it was on a real console and not the 3DS. You're insane. Like, there's kick-ass things going on. It's like, oh, it is so shitty looking. No. I cannot wait. I really hope the rumors are true about Sun and Moon coming up. Okay, but do you... Now... I don't, I don't believe that... Uh, okay, you know what? I'm moving on. I'm moving on. So, did you play anything else? You good? Oh, New Year's resolutions? Po- oh, New Year's resolutions. We'll finish Pokemon. Okay. Which I'm going very strong on. Yeah. Um. Oh, that's about it. I don't know. Okay. I, I don't have any... What are your New Year's resolutions? My you new, tell me. My New Year's resolutions is to actually beat some of the games that I bought last year. With what free time? Good. Very good point. Um... Like, do a lot more uh, f- uh, fan interaction with Yaku as a fan and building that community there. Right, like contests? Mm. Yes. I, we're announcing now that we will be having Yaku as a zero contest to win, hopefully, a physical copy of the game, the business edition. We will see. I've, I've already been in talks with Sega about it, so we should be able to pull that off. Mm. Um, we, I will let you guys know more as soon as we do. Please be excited. Please be excited. Uh, what else? Uh, New Year's resolutions. Uh, I mean, it, uh, either uh, Patreon takes off and, you know, it goes really good or I, you know, find a better paying job than the one I currently <laughs> have. <laughs> that would be nice. Um, Come on, Patreon. Yeah, I don't want to dwell too long on the Patreon. Patreon has been very good to us, especially the last yeah. couple of months. So, you know, shouts out to you guys over there. Uh, speaking of which, we might as well get the plug in out. If you guys want to access to our podcast uh, three days early, yeah. if you guys want to watch our exclusive Patreon backer series, head on over to patreon.com slash fan. Give us a couple of bucks and you get access to all of our content early and yeah. Patreon exclusive yeah. uh, wallpapers, videos, playthroughs. Yeah, take a look at the tiers. $1 gets you stuff all the way up to $50, which gets you physical stuff. Yeah. Speaking of physical stuff, I finally found out what happened with our postcards. Right. The, the one that we were supposed to get sent out. November. No, in November. Turns out that the supplier that I brought them bought them from registered the wrong address and the incorrect phone number because it pulled it from my PayPal when they did when they put the order together. How embarrassing. It's the worst. So it got sent to me, then they had no idea what where I was, and then they tried to call the phone number that was incorrect. That didn't work. So yeah, it's gone off into the ether. So I reordered everything. Everyone that's a $50 backer is going to get like three postcards all at once. Then most of them are going to be apologizing. Uh, some are <laughs> going to be thanking them. Uh, there's an exclusive design coming for uh, for January. It looks it's awesome. It's so cool. My, th- it's my favorite postcard. Like the, the, the postcards, you know, generally tend to be uh, ba- based on whatever design we come up for the shirt that month. Yeah. But January, you're getting something fresh. It looks great. I am very happy with how January's card looks. All right. Okay. Uh, so that's fifty dollars or more. So if someone subscribes at fifty dollars right now, will they get the January one? Yes, yes. So the the, the way that the tiers have set up, uh, Patreon just turned on a new system where if someone backs you, they pay right away. Yeah. Which to me is, if you just subscribe in January, we've got your money, and your stuff's going to go out just like ASAP. And if not ASAP, then you you will be getting it as quickly as I can. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, like when it arrives. Exactly. Yeah. So. Look forward to that. Sorry that's been taking so long, but just getting these supplier issues sorted out. I, I don't think we expected to have $50 yeah, backers. Yeah, that was pretty much so, it. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think anybody was expecting it. So, thank you guys. Okay, we, we've prattled on about Patreon long enough. Uh, thank you guys for your support. Let's move on to... Oh, what else? What have I been playing this week? What have you been playing? Okay, I've been playing Yakuza 0 for review. Again, it's great. Hey! 
Like no that, opinions. Oh, sorry, again, the Japanese version is great. Yeah, better. Okay. Um, <laughs> what the? What else have I played? I played some Let It Die. Like maybe you like did? oh, like fifteen minutes. That game's great. I got my ass beat. It was great. You deserved um, it. Oh, dude, what what else have like? I, it's been two weeks. I barely played a thing. No, we've been um, busy. Yakuza Six is the only other Santa thing that Claus I've been playing. Came to our house. Yeah. The Yakuza 6 is the only other thing that I've been playing. It's I, I'm go- going through just kind of cleaning up sub stories, trying to work my way through all the like uh, mini games, baseball stuff like that. It, it's been oh, a bit. Of, we played it, Lovers. Lovers. Oh in yeah, a Le- space Lovers time. in a Dangerous Space Time. That was great. But we, uh, like we've been playing that with the kids. We've been playing that with our party on New Year's. We have a fully functioning crew. Yeah. That is the we weird. have one crew that's better than the other. Yes, it is a shmup. <laughs> That is played with up to four players, and you all control a single ship. So you've got one guy being the captain, you've got one guy on guns, you've got one guy on the shields. What a good party game! That's yeah, so much fun. It is a good game. It's very, very good. It was free for plus. Yes. Right? Yeah. So yeah, please, please check out Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time. It's very, very good. Uh, I think that's basically it. So Can you play that one online? Mm, I don't think so. No, I think it's oh. local only. So it's too bad. It's more fun to yell at people in person. It is true, but. Okay, so let's move on here. Um, in the world of Yakuza Six news, or in the world Wait, of Yakuza news, there's still just, news. There has been uh, not not too too much in the last couple of weeks, just because with the holidays and Yakuza Six is kind of winding down. Um, we still don't have the last piece of DLC that sh- I thought that was going to come out last. I think last Thursday, but it just never dropped. Oh, maybe because Christmas. I, I guess so. Um, it's supposed to be a Michio Ono costume, but it's like. To me, that's the worst piece of DLC because it's not the regular Michio Ono costume. It's Michio Ono with a tiny little head. What, it's why? not his... I don't know. That's it looks, stupid. It looks so dumb, especially because in-game, like, Michio has the big head. Like, he's got a proper yeah, character. Yeah, they've made this model. Yeah, he, they've got a proper it? character model. Why not just use that? Why Why give his tiny head Michio? I don't like it. Uh, but it's not dropped yet, so I guess I don't know why I'm talking about that. Uh... The Yakuza 6, the, the official, I should say, Riga Godoku Twitter has been running a contest uh, for taking photos in Yakuza 6. So if you live in Japan, you can take a photo. You have to give it a specific hashtag and tweet it at the official account. And over the last week, they've been taking in uh, everyone's pictures and then they just announced the results. I think, what day was that? Oh, geez. December 29th. Yeah. They, they put up the, the winning photos from the first week where you had to take a, a picture of a miracle. Okay. That, 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 that was, you know, something that maybe you wouldn't get or something that looked really good. You know, it's something not standard for the game. Okay. So if you go onto uh, yakusafan.com, we've got all the photos listed there. Uh, they look great. I, I'm so happy with like all the weird stuff. Uh, the one that won was a picture of Michio Ono. That looks great. But the weirdest one is the th- in third place here. Where somehow Kiryu managed to lure three high school girls into his uh, bedroom. <laughs> I don't know how they pulled this off. But somehow someone broke the game to bring three high school girls into Kiryu's bedroom. That in is Chair. It's so bizarre. So that that was my favorite. I feel like that one should win. Uh, yeah, go, go check those out. They look really okay. cool. Uh, the next contest... Please don't describe pictures anymore. It's okay. The next contest that's coming out is, going, is a photo of a miracle around Kamurocho. Oh, so, we'll, so oh, this well, the first one was a miracle. This one's a miracle around yeah, Camarocha. Yeah, exactly. So just yeah, a photo from within Camarocha that looks cool. Okay, more or less. Uh, and again, you have to be in Japan in order to enter because you win like a, I think it's like a di- like travel card points or some nonsense. It, it's uh, <laughs> that's the weirdest contest. It, it really is. So I don't know, go check that out. Look forward to the uh, winners. I think that at some point we're going to do a contest of taking photos in Yakuza 6. When it comes out? Probably when it comes out, we'll just do... I don't know what we can give away, though, because, you know, I usually give... Sega. I usually give away a copy of right, the game, but, but everyone that's going to be entering is already going to have a copy of the game, oh, so... what about a picture, a selfie of us? That's not a very good prize. That's nearly as a bad prize as the Daytona contest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got to get that prize out. Oh, I forgot you are even doing a prize. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, uh, check it. The, check that contest out. Um, I don't know what would make a good photo. Okay, here's here's what I think would be the best photo to take to win you mm-hmm. that contest. You, while in first person mode in Yakuza Six, can still move around with your camera out. So while you're doing that, you can also jump off buildings. So you can take a selfie whilst falling off a building. 
Yes. In the middle of Yakuza 6, but the camera goes crazy because it doesn't know how to adjust for both the third person, first person camera. So Do that's that. a good idea. Okay, Cal. All right. The next piece of news, moving right on. Mm-hmm. Yakuza 6 was up for the most anticipated on the PlayStation blog. Uh, it was. This is all done by voting. So it's. I believe it's already closed now, but we've been promoting it pretty heavily. Yeah. I think we've got a chance to win. So this is a North American blog? It, it's the North American yeah. PlayStation blog. You go over there, you can vote for most anticipated game. Yakuza 6 is in the list, along with a whole bunch of other ones. Along with Persona 5, which I believe won last year. <gasps> Not fair. I don't think it's fair. Um, but it is it is in the running. It was in the running. I don't think we have the results yet. Uh, I'm just going to jump over there right now and double check. But okay. yeah, I don't think that the results have been announced yet, which yeah, it's a bit of a shame. I, I really wish they would hurry up on that. Like well, once, once the voting is closed, just let me know. Can I talk about our new shirt? Sure. Go for it. Um, there's a new shirt. Okay. It's, it's a New Year's kind of shirt, I guess. It's as well as Yakuza Zero. Yeah. And I don't know. I really like this one. I think this one's like super sick. Yeah, I totally agree. He- head on over to our uh, either our this store. This one's on... like s- really close for copyright infringement. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> you know, what? it's fine. It- it's all original art. Yeah. <laughs> not, I mean, it. not my original art, <laughs> yeah. but it's it's original art. You know what? No. So, one... uh, yeah, go on yakuzafan.com and click the link at the top because that will have links to T Public and Redbubble yeah. stores. Just, yeah. It depends on where you are. It, in the world. it is honestly one of and my favorite. And if you want it on a clock, it, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> it is one of my favorite shirts I think we've ever done. I, yeah. I feel like our shirt designs for the last couple of months have been pretty good. Like yeah. I'm very happy. I don't with know. It. I, I helped draw Michio. So yeah, that's the, all I our, care our about. Christmas shirt is great. This shirt is great. It, it definitely gets me pumped for Yakuza Zero. I, oh I want man, it. it looks so good. I I love Young Kiryu. Young Kiryu is the coolest. Oh, okay. Um, so the blog didn't go up yet, did it? Which one? The PlayStation. No, it's not up yet, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, we, we I want to talk out. about the real news. The only good news that came this week. Nobody cares about this. Okay. They, well, they wait, 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 wait. You have news. Well, no. I mean, I know it. You told me. Okay. <laughs> but so, I've been dying to complain about it. Okay, what's the news? Nagoshi and Yokoyama have been talking about what the future of the Ryuga Gotoku series is going to have. Okay. And Is that all you know well, about this? I know, I know what Yokoyama said, but I can't remember what Nagoshi said. Okay. I mean, really, he didn't say a hell hell of a lot. Uh, Nagoshi was on 4gamer.com, .net? I don't know, mm-hmm. whatever, wherever 4gamer is. I think it's .net. Let me, I should probably double check that. Um, yeah, 4gamer.net. Yeah, that's a, it's a really big Japanese blog, a game blog. It kind of mm-hmm. rivals Famitsu. Um, and every year they ask different game developers what, the hell, what they thought of the year, uh, what they're looking forward to in the new year, and any special messages they have for their readers. So they asked Nagoshi, and he gave you know the standard stuff. Um, what he's been excited about is mm-hmm. PlayStation VR. He thinks it's super interesting. And then they asked him what his resolutions were for 2017, and what and a message for the readers. And he's like, "Well, I don't have anything specific. We just got finished making Yakuza Six, but stay tuned because very soon I'm going to have something new to announce." Yeah. He doesn't say whether it's Yakuza specific. He doesn't. I mean, it, it could be Hero Bank Three for all I know. Yeah. But. We we yeah, do know that we do know that Riga Gotoku Studio has been hiring for another title, mm-hmm. so something is in production. Uh, we don't know what it is yet. Uh, I believe there's a Sega Raw coming up like really soon. Okay. So we'll see. I, I don't know if he'll announce it there or whether Famitsu is going to get the scoop like they always do. Yeah. Totally unbiased opinions yeah, at Famitsu. Definitely not paid for. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Yokoyama, on the other hand, had something to say. Yes. So he. Hey, my news. Okay. So Yogiyama was interviewed for what? What was he interviewed for? Was it the same site? Exactly the same yeah. site. It was in the exact yeah. same article. Same article. As Nagoshi. Yeah. Anyway, so he, same thing. Basically, he wanted to tell the readers that um, in 2017 to, or in the future to look forward to a game that takes place somewhere in the middle. He's what he said specifically, and I will read the quote here. I think that 2017 will be the year in which we take our first step towards what comes next. I'm sort of thinking of ways we can give you to enjoy a new Riga Gotoku that ties together both both the past and the future. Now, how do you think that sounds? That, in my opinion, implies that we're going to see more content that in the middle, like that comes that brings the story together. Oh, really? That's how you think that, that that's either, how it comes across to you? Either first of all, Kiwami too. 
That was my I, that was my second thought actually. I was thinking, okay, that could be in Kiwami two Re, remake Yakuza two with the Dragon Engine. That would be yeah. sick. Like sign me up. Um, but I don't think that these games anything that's going to come. I I don't really know if they're going to start Kiryu anymore. I I don't think so either. But what I would like to see. And what I think this could be is what he said when he says bring together both the past and the future. He's thinking the past being Yakuza 6 mm-hmm. and the future being what comes next. Right. Like, so a game that passes the baton to the next generation that's going to be your new hero. So it's the new hero in maybe a new setting, but shadows of the original yeah. games interact with that. Does so that do you sense? think it would be someone we know already or someone new? Um, I believe... I, I really don't know. I, I can't comment. I, I would like to think that it, it could be a returning character from Yakuza 6. Might be mm-hmm. the next person to follow. Yeah. But I don't know if there's anyone interesting enough or blank slate enough. Everyone, like, Kiryu is such a blank slate kind of personality that yeah. he works in any situation, really. And I don't know whether their next game would give someone with a personality, whether they would pull someone from their existing mm-hmm. character roster. Um I don't know. Okay, what about this? When they say past and future, maybe they don't mean, you know, like a new game. Maybe they mean like, oh, World War Two. Because- you were stealing my bit. That what? I was talking about this I don't on Twitter. You, talk- I you are so full of shit. You were so full of shit. No, I, I swear. I don't go on Twitter. You were so full of shit. No. I had this exact conversation with KHH subs oh, did you really? and a whole bunch of people about what we would like to see next in the series. And this was your idea. My idea was set it either during or just post World War Two. I was thinking World War Two because that's. Oh yeah, Six. yeah. I, the the oh. what? No, oh. Oh, ah, Jesus ah. Christ! <laughs> Twenty six minutes. Oh, I need to write this down. I need to cut this out. Oh, really? Yep, that one. That's a big spoiler. Why? That's a big spoiler, trust me. Why? I don't even know why. <laughs> yeah, I know. Trust me, it's a big spoiler. Oh. That's okay. So, I I could see what you're saying. I am I might just bleep that whole section out. <laughs> so, so that people know that conversations took place and you, and you spilled the beans. <laughs> it's been long enough. It has not been long enough. Not until it releases in the West. <laughs> I, I, I hear what you're saying. I do think... Okay. Th- I think that... Setting it past World War Two, uh, have it set in like kind of the slums, right? Like just post World War Two after everyone was kind of evacuated mm-hmm. and, and people were picking up the pieces. They had like slum towns set up where refugees were and people were trying, you know, doing anything for money. Like they were, they were like fighting for money, like boxing, yeah. taking on like American uh, the troops, like mm-hmm. you know, in order to yeah prove Japan's dominance and also earn money because there was nothing. It was very poor, very yeah. Uh, you know, we lost this war. Oh, shit, what now? Mm-hmm. But it was very much a time when the Yakuza started really coming out. Like, be, be like, oh, okay, let's start these families. Let's uh, help the Japanese people get back on their feet after the war. Like, I don't think a lot of people realize how instrumental in recovery and uh, support the Yakuza are to the people, especially in the early days. Yeah, and in these more crime... In, in the middle of crisis, the Yakuza yeah. help people. Like, do, do you remember a few years ago during the tsunami? There were gangs of Yakuza roaming the streets, helping people that were like, you know, who were trapped in places, bringing people supplies and bottles of water. And they, because they're Yakuza groups, they didn't need to adhere to any kind of, like, uh, aid group. They were just, we're, we're the people who need to look after this town. Mm-hmm. And we, you know, let's face it, the Yakuza, they have bad names for themselves. So they go out and they help people, then people think better of that family and then, you know, it makes a little bit more sense why you might want mm-hmm. to pay them protection money or thank you money. Yeah, So if you want to make some kind of donation to the name. Ex- yeah, exactly. So Or, you know, maybe if you're a police officer, you can look the other way next time. But that's just it. There, there's no red tape that they need to go through. Yeah. And they were literally helping people and they were doing the same thing after World War II. So I want to see the origin of the Tojo clan. Yeah, like, like when it was first, first when, chairman, yes, first established. Yes, exactly. I want to see that rise from post. I, I think it only started post World War Two, and that rise from nothing to power. And I, I don't know, maybe, maybe have like the the chairman being the main character, like the first chairman yeah. of the Tojo Clan. Uh, the name is escaping. And he me could right be now. played at by Kiryu. I don't. Yeah. Th- I don't think he needs to be. I, I think that he could be someone else. Tell a side story. Let me yeah. get. In, let me get invested in the Tojo Clan a little bit more. Like mm-hmm. I, I want to know what it took to make that 
That, yeah. that That's where I want the story to go. I don't know if it will, but I feel like there is such a good story that you could tell right there. Yeah. Like, well, it's just and, uh, low-hanging fruit. Well, and I'm thinking past and future, past being uh, Ishin and Kenzin. And yeah. Ishin taking place just around the turn of the century. Yeah. And then kind of what's in the middle, World War II kind of hits that right in between. I mean, yes. Just, I'm just saying. I, I, I know, but I don't think that's going to be the case. I think that, I, I I think, think the when you say like, past and future, I don't think that's the case. I think the most likely situation is it's going to be a... Just a, a next game, a sequel. I think so too, especially because they have that dragon engine sitting there and yeah. they have Camarocho uh, already modeled and ready to go. Yeah. Well, so. uh, but Kiwami 2 isn't out of the question either. We will see. I, I like. I would like a Kiwami 2, please. Then give me that. Uh, what else could they make? We are, um, we are out of speculation mode? Binary or? Domain 2. Give me Binary Domain 2. <laughs> that game is rad. Uh, actually, the other th- last thing would be um, when they say past and future, do they mean... Uh, in the game world, or do they mean in our world? Could this be a game that ties into VR? Like, I don't think so. I, I really don't think so. I don't, I don't think Yakuza would work in VR. Like may, maybe like a little side thing, like some kind of like a downloadable, or maybe right, a game. But you have Nagoshi saying that he likes VR and it's most interesting to him. Well, Yokoyama actually said too that the most interesting game that he played in 2016 was Summer Lesson, which yeah. is the the one by uh, who makes that? Is it Team Ninja? It's the, that's the one in VR where you sit down with an anime girl and she teaches you English yeah. and you interact with her and, you know, basically have a friend in VR. Yeah. So both of those together makes me think maybe they want to kind of I don't transition think, into VR. I don't know if there's enough money in VR, though. I, mean, I, think, I, don't I think it's a think, good idea. Based on what we've learned from Forging the Dragon, I don't think that they care. About how much things cost or whether or not stuff's going to make money. Yakuza 6 didn't perform as well as they... No, Yakuza 6 actually did very well. Like, their the first week sales were kind of slow, but after that it just mm. took off. So, Yakuza 6, I think, might be their best-selling game. It oh. outsold Final Fantasy 15. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we've, well, we've always speculated though, that 6 actually does feel very VR-ready. Yeah, there's a so, lot of stuff, especially... What first, if that whole engine... First, first person mode yeah. feels like it was made for VR. Right, so what if the whole engine's VR-ready? I'd be down for that. Like, maybe they plan for this. You say v- there's no money in VR. Well, maybe the VR is already done. Maybe they're if hiring they, for the story. If they could just roll out a patch for Yakuza 6 that makes it VR capable. Like, only when you go into first-person mode. I'm pretty sure Final Fantasy 15 has a VR mode in it. Yeah. So, I'd be down for I that. I mean, that is the future of gaming that everyone is saying. That's what I hear. I, so, still, I still have yet to try it. I've, I've had send us a VR. I have had VR units in this house. And I have not tried it. Well, not, it's not a real VR not, No, unit. not PlayStation VR, but I've had it's VR It's one of those units. little cell phone ones, like the Google. Yeah, good it was enough. Google Cardboard, basically. It was more or less a Google Cardboard. But still, it's VR. It's good enough. No, it's not good enough. It's not even real VR. No. All right, so speaking of Forging the Dragon Part 5 is yep. now live for yes, everyone. It is. You can watch it. Yes. Cal, you did a great job. Cal, help write it. Help write it. You did help write it. It, were, it was a team effort. but right, I th- it was a team effort. I think you did a very good job. And I did all of the editing. Yes, so. you did a very good job on the editing. I Thank think you. I don't know. I don't watch them. Oh yes, <laughs> <laughs> I think I've only watched the first yeah. one. <laughs> that that's probably true. So uh, yeah, the next one uh, we're we're mid writing now. We've got all of the uh, the basic outline there. And Cal, you need to sit down and give it a once over. Then I need to give it a twice over. Yeah. And then we need to argue for about a week. And then we should be good to go. Yeah. So spoilers. Um, Yakuza cost a lot of money to make. It costs a lot of money to make. <laughs> Like even you know what it costs a lot of money to market as well. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff. So be excited for that. Uh, what else? Our Patreon backer uh, Q and A and thank you video is now live on the channel. Yeah. Uh, go check those out if you're a backer. And the but the thank you video is just on the channel. Oh yeah, you if can you watch yeah, that. exactly. Go go and thank our backers for keeping the site live. See your dumb faces. Yep. Um, we are going to be recording hopefully this weekend a Riga Gotoku Six spoiler cast. Yeah. And I'm going to fit in great. (laughs) For this, the plan is to get in uh, all of the people that are in our Discord that have played Yakuza 6. That have passionate feelings. Yeah, exactly. That need to get their feelings Chelsea, get a microphone. Yeah, exactly. So if uh, I'm going to throw this out there now. If you guys want to get in on this, message me on Discord or send me a uh, message on Twitter. And I would like to hear from other fans that have finished the game who have already... Who have feelings, who have thoughts that they want to get out about how the story was or... Whatever. So just hit me up some way. We're going to be doing some discussion with people live. I would like to get maybe a few pre-recorded things in there. Like if you yeah. can, if you want to give like a five-minute feedback thing on what you thought, 
Yeah. But, uh, and yeah. you don't just, want to talk to us? No, no, no. I don't mind having a little discussion, but, you know, if, if it's just like a little segment, yeah. just, you know, let me know. Like, or just, you want to talk in, some more, maybe. Exactly. <laughs> like, just, just get, get in contact with me if you want to be involved in a spoiler yeah. podcast. So do that on the on Discord. Get in contact with or, me on Discord. Yeah, or through uh, Twitter, and then yeah. I'm going to point you to the Discord. And yeah. Say, hey. Discord is the best way yeah. t- to talk to us. Yeah. I just so, dropped my phone. Perfect. <laughs> and again, we're recording that this weekend, so let me know right away. You know what? This goes live for everyone on Friday, so it's going to be a uh, interesting. If you guys are listening to this on Friday and want to take part, let me know right now. Yeah. <laughs> Pause the podcast, <laughs> head over to uh, Twitter or Discord, and just let me know. Oh boy! Now I think that's basically it for Yakuza news, right? Yeah. Yakuza Zero is coming. Yakuza Six is out. Mm-hmm. DLC is nowhere to be seen. Um, I did hear from John about Yakuza Zero. Yakuza Zero has DLC. It, every, everybody knows Yakuza games come with like a bunch of DLC yeah. right up for premium adventure mode, costumes, shit like that. Yakuza Zero does have the same that same kind of DLC, but instead of giving it to you all at once, like every past game, they're slowly going to roll it out on the same kind of release schedule that they did in Japan. Oh, that's exciting. So, yeah. So, instead of being done with the game and shipping it off, now it's going to update... Because it's free DLC, it's, you're just going to get an update to your PS4, and then you can go in and check out the costumes and premium adventure. That's Perfect. great. I, I think it's good to keep you coming back. Uh, yeah. I mean, th- there's so much to do. Yeah. You're, you're going to be coming back. Oh my! Right? Like, I, I think that they said that Zero is an 80-hour game. Yeah. Um, you, you're going to be at this for a while, so hey, why not wear a cool costume? Now, right. I think that we should end Yakuza talk here. Right. Okay. And I want to talk with you All right. about our most memorable games of 2016. Okay. Now, these maybe maybe these games you didn't uh, didn't come out in 2016. All the ones we picked on the list were come, came out in 2016. This I, works. We okay. rewrote the list. Well, so. this, this works out nicely then. So why don't we start with you, Cal? In 2016, what games did you get that you loved? You know what I'm going to say. What are you going to say? I'm going to say Pokemon. <laughs> Is it that good? It's that good. It's totally that good. It, I haven't been this excited for a Pokemon game since I was seven. Really? It took everything that I loved about Gen 1 and everything I hate it or I, I loved about the new games and I put them together. Like it, And it doesn't have all the crap I hate it. So The new Pokemon are great, although I still haven't found an executor with a long neck. Really? I figured that would be like one of the first things that you found. Right? Maybe they're only in Sun. Oh, man. Oh, God. You gotta go look this right. up now. Okay, no, they're not actually because I I did kind of look up who okay. was on it. Okay. Um, the, the game is sick. It goes fucking Shimigami Tensei on you. Really? Like it is. I, I've heard it's that it's got I've... a way heavier story than the other Pokemon games. Really? The, the, it's a little because when I look at that game, it looks like Fun Time Island Adventures. That's what I thought. Uh, I would we're going completely blind for this yeah. twist. Yeah. So it, it goes places? It, it goes places. It's a little bit darker of a story. I mean, it's still a, a game It's still for a fun kids. time island adventure. At, at the end of the day, it's still a game for 10-year-olds. So it's a little bit dumbed down than, say, Shin Megami Tensei, for example. But yeah. it, it has a, a story, okay. which is better than most of the Pokemon. Like, I played... That's when I no, probably, so Here's where you're going to get some shit, because I feel like all Pokemon have a fairly decent story. I don't know. I mean, they have an okay story. They're I, not, I think Pokemon is, is betrayed by its pacing. Yes, this game is perfectly paced. That's good to I've know. I've never, like, even the first game isn't as well paced as this one. That's good to know. Because, I like, that. like, Pokemon for me is tedious. I mean, they added, a, you know, Mark. I know I, I missed a couple gens, so I, some of this might be old hat for some people, but for me, it's new. There's markers on the map to tell me exactly where to go. It's very. One clear. thing that I wish they would add back to the Yakuza series. Right? I, I need. You need waypoints. No, I need map markers for my friggin' sub stories. I hate blind running in games in, in yeah. Yakuza looking for sub stories. It pisses me off. And they had it in five and it was awesome and it felt so good to have those markers. And it, it was taken out ever since. And I can't stand it. I need that direction. Yeah, it I just, don't know why they would take that it's out. It's such annoyance. I'll tell you right now, it was to sell guides. I will tell you right now. Well, this it was Pokemon to sell game guides. was not made to sell guides. Like, no. everything about it completely negates the need for a guide. Even mm-hmm. like you get something in the Pokedex, you can find out where to catch it. Right in the Pokedex. That's really cool. It's, anyway, I won't... You know, I've talked about so, it so much, so but... Po- so Pokemon's your first pick? Yes, Pokemon. Okay. I, well, I'm playing Pokemon Moon. Okay, so I will say my pick for the uh, for, for something that I, I really enjoyed in 2016. Yeah, like, what is, like... The, if someone says, what did you play in 2016? Like, what did you like? What's yeah. the first thing that comes to mind? The first thing that comes to my mind... I mean, I, I will just... I'll throw this one out there. Yakuza 6 is in that list. 
if you haven't checked that out yet, I'd still recommend it. Even if there are some things I dislike about it, I still think it's worth checking out. Yeah, one out of five, Deacon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'm not going to bore you with more details on that. Look for my review. Dark Souls 3. That game came out. I wasn't sure what to expect. I knew that Miyazaki was at the head. Mm-hmm. And it's just so good. It is the refinement of all the systems in the Souls series. The, the way that you can just change covenants on the fly feels so good. Like the, the the gameplay is so smooth and everything just feels so that, that, that tough but fair gameplay. If I have one criticism, it's it relies too much on the past, and also it doesn't feel as heady as the other games in the series. Yeah, like I feel like everything seems so obvious. Yeah, like everything is spelled out and then you're beaten over the head with it. Like well, yeah, figuratively and literally. In Dark Souls, the storytelling is supposed to be super hard to follow. Yeah, you're not supposed to know. like. In Dark One, the item descriptions lie to you. Yeah. Like, there, you straight up get items that tell you lore that is incorrect. And then you find out from a guy in game that that is actually incorrect. Or through breaking the pro- the progress of the game, you find out what the real world is up to. Dark Souls 3 throws all that out the window, makes the story super obvious. Yeah. Um, fills in all the blanks from the first game. And I just... To a fault. To, yeah, yes, definitely to a fault. But... I gotta say that gameplay is so good. It is the perfect mix of Souls and Bloodborne, and it's mm, See, it's so good. And I completely disagree with you on that. I mean, I like it too, but I didn't want a mix of Souls and Bloodborne. I wanted Dark Souls. I played Bloodborne for Bloodborne. I played Dark Souls for Dark Souls. The problem is that everyone was already playing Dark Souls like Bloodborne, and the argument is that you're playing Dark Souls wrong. Well, I played one and two wrong. Well then, <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. Like this is, my, but that is my problem. Like I really, I played one and two pretty aggressively. Yeah, especially two. Yeah, and not aggr- I played two with power, like a power stance. I used two. Me too. Sh- I used two swords in a power stance mode. That was my game. I had two rapiers. I think. Did you? Uh, did you I can't remember, but goddamn. Um, like I, I love. I don't know. I didn't like Dark Three as much as I liked Scholar, and I liked mm. one first, and then. Scholar, and then that—that that is a weird. That is a weird three. order. That is a very weird order. But I will say that Dark Three was still an amazing game. The DLC is even better. I just beat that a little while yeah. ago. If you if you're on the fence, if you haven't played Dark Souls yet, get on board because oh, it's so good. Well, you know, I I agree that you got to play Dark Souls. Yeah, but play the first one. D- Dark Souls is for fantasy RPGs. What Yakuza is for brawler RPGs. The yeah yeah it's genre redefining like peep. People try to copy these games because of how well they do the things they do. Maybe not Yakuza so much, but... <laughs> they should be. Yeah, they, they should be. They really should be. Yeah, I've got a lot of things to say about Dark Souls 3, and it's it's pretty... I, I like the game, don't get me wrong, but it's pretty negative. It really? could, did not live up to my expectations whatsoever. Hmm. I just... I was I, so... I, think... I played 1, 2, and 3 back-to-back. Yeah. You had the weirdest experience. Like, I waited years between them. Yeah. You played them over a week. Yeah, so, well, it was longer than a week. But. It was like two weeks, but still. Yeah, I played one, two, three, boom, 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 and I feel like I have the most fair comparison between the three yeah. because I I could look at them. You were right there, like you yeah. you can look at one and say, okay, well, one did this, this, and this, and three did this, this, and this. Yeah, and it's so obvious what the faults are. And I, I wear the same thing with Yakuza Six. Like I I'm playing Yakuza games just about every day. Yeah, like for, for either recording or for something for the blog. So. When I'm playing Yakuza 6, it's bleedingly obvious what the faults are compared yeah. to 5. And 5's faults are obvious compared to 2. And it's just... you. I think that... I think it helps to have a significant break between these kinds of games. So that you ha- your mind and your body have a chance to forget and then relearn what it is you love about it. And I think that 6 has a bit of a problem where it came out so close to Kiwami. And it has so much that is different that it's kind of hard to to break that and i think three dark souls three has that same problem for you specifically yeah because you played two and then immediately jumped into three right but also the environments are unimagined and i really just i i didn't like the changes they made to the system and i I understand that maybe i've been playing it wrong the whole time but no 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 that that's again that that is hyperbole hyperbolic no hyperbole hyperbole I i don't know um you haven't been playing it wrong for you. But the devs say that you've been playing it wrong. And right. everybody who plays 
Bloodborne style, aggressive, aggressive all the time. Don't stop attacking and rolling. Say that you've been playing it wrong. And so I feel like they changed Dark 3 to cater to that crowd who is... Right, but that's but then it took it away from me. Yeah. Like, it took the gameplay experience that I like. But also, I liked the weird items. I liked the environment. I like the convoluted bullshit. Yeah, and... Dark 3 has none of that. It's not as imaginative as 1 and 2. Yeah. I, I like the weird storytelling that didn't make sense in 1. And then... Yeah, the dreamlike stuff in 2. Yeah, like, the fact that you needed to break the fucking game in order to get the real story in 1 is inspired. That's amazing. Like, yeah. You, you have to start the... When it launched, you had to start the game as a specific class in order to get that story. Like, you to be able to get the real story you, at the time... Like, th- this is slight spoilers, but you need a specific key that when you first started the game, you could only get if you played as a thief. Yeah. There was no way to get it in-game. So if you wanted the real story of Dark Souls, you needed to start as a thief class with a specific key and sequ- sequence break the game to the point where you could fight an end-game level boss... Before you could get even close to the end game. Beat it and then you would find out the real story of what's going on in the world. Which was holy shit for the time. And people didn't find this out right away. It took them a while. It took a long time. It's like, oh. And Dark man. 3, it's like, oh, we know everything we need to know. Not yeah, we, we, not just that. We know, everything, we know everything you need to know. Also, here's th- something to fill in all of the blanks. Yeah. And uh. not just that, we're going to actively take away a little bit of the law. Yeah. The whole idea of hollows being a sentient race goes against everything that we've been told about hollows and hollowing. Yeah. It it's... doesn't make any sense. No, and it's not even good writing. I they you know what this is? Maybe Yokoyama helped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put Yokoyama on that team. I think he's on the team. Oh. Okay, so Dark Souls 3. I like it. You're kind of mediocre on it. I mean, I played it. I, li- I had fun. Like, it, it, I think it's a good game. I still put how many hours? I, I, I think 60 that, hours. I think that it is the best version of the systems that they have. I, I think everything works really no, well. I think two was. No, you're, you're insane. <laughs> um, okay, so you want to pick your... What's your next pick? Well, here? I had Dark Souls on my list as well because I didn't play very many games this year. And... That's fine. So do you want me to pick another one then? Um, no, we're going to talk about Inside now. Okay, that was another one that we we both played. Yeah. So we actually have a full playthrough video of this up on our other channel. a complete let's play. Of us going in blind, not knowing what to expect, and just falling in love with this weird indie game. Whoa, what's going on? Yeah. It's like three hours of that. It's so good. (laughs) Inside was the perfect game for me to just finish in a night. Yeah. I I feel like if I had to come back to it, I wouldn't. No. Um, But if you've got three hours to set aside, I, I think it's only like 10 bucks. Check out Inside. It gets weird. And I think that we're going to be speculating on the lore of this one for a long time. Yeah, I uh, Unless the devs outright come and say something, which I don't think they will. They no. still haven't told us what Limbo was all about. No. We got more information about Limbo from the Xbox Live Marketplace description than what is offered in the game. <laughs> that's, Isn't that... That's, that's so weird, right? That is crazy. But yeah, uh, Inside is, is a really good little puzzle game, little story it's yeah. very linear, not a lot of skill involved, you know, no not consequence really. to death other than trying again. Yeah, but that story and yeah. that world, like, yeah. it's so good. I cannot... The sound design is really good. Like, yes. Everything about it yeah. just comes together really well. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I cannot recon- recommend Inside Enough for someone who's looking for a really short, really good experience. Yeah. Like it's, it's that classic indie game experience that you, mm. you look for in, in those kind of games. Yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, my next game. Uh, Box Box Boy on the 3DS. This is a weird little puzzle game. It's the sequel to Box Boy, yeah. where you play as a little square, a little box guy called QB. Yeah. Um, it is made by the Kirby team, which is why it's called QB because QB and Kirby yeah. in Japanese are really close. So it's just a nice little reference, and it's just puzzles involving you creating boxes in order to get to the end of the stage. It's really cute. The story is almost nothing, but it's just. I've never, I haven't been so enamored with a puzzle game in a long time. It's, it's really, really good, and it's like five bucks. Yeah, so, you, you like these games. I don't know what it is about Box Boy, but it's just I, I think this it's the only game I played this year that I have one hundred or last year that I have one hundred percented. I, I, I can't think of anything else. Like I went and I did all the puzzles. I found all the secrets in each puzzle level, playing them over and over again to make sure that I want, got it. I unlocked the secret clothing. You at the end of the game, as you play, you get more and more clothes that you can unlock. 
if you beat every single puzzle 100%, you get like a crown and a cape and a scepter. <laughs> and it's literally like you feel like a king. There's sparkles and shit going everywhere. What a good little game. I cannot recommend Box Box Boy enough and Box Boy. Box Boy, yeah. I think, is the better one, honestly, though. Okay. Well, my my next game has boxes. Okay. Uh, Dragon Quest Builders. Um, I, I was surprised with this game. Mm-hmm. I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did. Yeah. I also didn't know it was going to have like a pretty linear story. That was shocking. I thought it was going to be just... Kind of Minecrafty. Yeah. Like but, I knew there was a story, yeah. but I thought it was going to be way more open-ended. Like open world, but you got some quests going on. But no, it's like quest, 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 boss fight. Stat screen. Yeah. Like you, you get a results screen on how how good did you do in this first chapter like of the game. Like how many days went by. And there's yeah. trophies for like That's doing so this quicker. Weird. That's um, so weird. You don't have to make everything if you don't want to. You mm-hmm. can earn more or less crafting recipes. Yeah. And then like... I beat it, and I'm thinking, okay, you know what, this is not going to be that long of a game, and then it's going to open up, and I can build, and I can free play, right? Yeah, and then we're going to get, like, more biomes to go to, stuff like that. Yeah, but that, I that's thought what it was, was going to be a pretty short story, and then it opens up. Like, yeah, and then it just becomes, like, a minecraft Yeah, Yeah, but no, I beat the story, uh, what I thought was the story, and it's like, Chapter two. Now you're in a completely different biome. You're in it with different that was characters. So weird. Like you're building different. But things. you spent like what twenty hours on that first world. I think it was more like ten to fifteen. But, but that that's not an insignificant amount of time. No, it's not. And like because you like you, not for a game that already has a free build. But, mode but they they don't tell you that like free play only unlocks after, after you, beat, you beat the first chapter. So you go into the first chapter thinking, okay, this is going to be my home base of operations. We're going to expand the world. Things are going to get bigger. We're going to be going to different places as we beat the bosses, as we do the story. See, I didn't even think it was going to be that. I thought it was going to be, you play this little story. This oh, okay. I see And what you're then saying. after that, that's when your free plan locks. Like, okay. It's just a shorter were... story to kind of give you something. Oh, no. That, that game goes on and on. Like, yeah. I beat it and then it's like, oh, no. And you lose everything. Like, you lose your recipes. That sucked. Uh, but completely different environment. Like yeah, harder, way like, harder, way like barren wasteland kind but of. But you and especially because in the first area you kind of get teleporters to go to different biomes already. Yeah. So it's like okay, I've already been to the desert place. I've already been to this place. This must be all there is. Yeah. No. 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 Yeah. the The first chapter of Dragon Quest Builders I thought was the entire game. Yeah. Of Dragon Quest Builders, and then you hit that stat screen, and then the chapter two thing pops up, and it's like. What the fuck? Yeah. There's more game in this game? So I don't even know how far this goes. That's as far as I've gone. I've started the second area and I, you know. Yeah, that, that is a good game. If, if you, I feel like that game is perfect for people who like the idea of Minecraft, but not the open-endedness of yeah, Minecraft. Yeah, like I don't like to just Me build either. for I the like, sake of building. I like to work towards a goal and that game gives you a goal to work towards. And it's cute. It's that Dragon Quest Akira, Akira Toriyama, Toriyama style. Yeah. like. It's funny. There's good little jokes in it. Yeah. It's it's an enjoyable game. Yeah. I totally agree. So. Okay. So I will say my next one here. And that is Hyperlight Drifter. Now, we backed this game when yeah. it went up on Patreon. It would build itself as kind of a Metroid meets Zelda top-down character action game. I don't know. We mostly liked the neon. I like the art, <laughs> I like the art style. But what I what sold me on it when I first saw it was like these weird Evangelion monsters. Yeah. Like the 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 title art for the game is a, a guy standing on the hill, blue, pink and blue neon with this like monstrosity standing screaming in the background. It's like what the fuck is this? This looks so good. And then you play it and it lives up to that. Yeah, it's it, a good game. It controls so well. Every upgrade feels like it adds to your character. Oh, yeah. Hyperlight Drifter. I think it's only like fifteen bucks. Yeah, it's so worth it. If you like weird indie games, if you like if you like Legend of Zelda top down style yeah. games, it is for me the best Zelda game I've ever played. No, you Z- don't even get to say that. Le- no, I- I've played I've played a lot You've of Zelda. You've never played a top down Zelda game. Yes, I have. I played Link to the Past, and I played uh, that mm-hmm. other one. A, a few and, minutes, and I've, and I've played Zelda f- one, and I've played Zelda two. A, okay, a few minutes of it does not count. I've played a surprising amount of Zelda, but. My problem is I don't stick with Zelda. None of them speak to me. You I, haven't stick with Hyperlight Drifter. I know, but it's one of those games. Again, this is games that have affected us in 2016. I sit there and I think about the shit that I still have left to do in it. All of these games yeah, on this list. I think about shit I have left to do in Zelda 1 that I'm never going to do because that game no, sucks. It, if, every, just about every day I'll sit there and I'll think about all the games on this list and go, oh, wow, I really need to get but back Hyper to But Hyperlight Drifter has a different uh, perspective than the old Zelda games. Not really. 
It's not straight top down though, isn't it? Yeah. I thought it was like three quarters. No. No, no, it's top down. Oh yeah. well, it's still it, I, I, it's completely I'm, different than Zelda. It's very different. Ah, uh, I feel like it's way faster. I yeah. feel like for me, the gameplay was more enjoyable than Zelda. I but think it's one type of weapon versus it's not you unlock more yeah oh do you unlock things? yeah i thought it was just weapon upgrades for you no as far as i know you unlock more and more shit like it's, it's got like a proper little skill progression system like it's very i don't know oh, it's different it's so than Zelda, good. but it's still a pretty good game it, it's it, co-opable it, yeah I'm, I'm just gonna like don't get me wrong it's not it's, you don't get to compare stuff to zelda it's not zelda but it is the only zelda like game that interests me the only zelda game you get to talk about is skyward sword i don't like skyward sword you like what about when you get the time shifting thing that was the one cool part of it, but I didn't like the game. Like, you're sailing, I, 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 sailing yeah, through the desert. That, or... that was the best part of that game was time sailing through the desert. Okay. Everything else in that game, I you could did, just you abandon. know what? I yeah. think that instead of Zelda, we should have Nier. Well, I think we should too. <laughs> um, where are we here? Okay, so you, you want to do your next one? No, I was trying to segue into your next into your demo. Oh, okay. Um. This was an honorable mention when I was trying to write a top <laughs> I 10. didn't really mean it. I was segueing for you. Oh, okay. I couldn't tell. Um, Ni- the demo for Nier Automata went live like two weeks ago. Yeah. That game is a revelation. It takes Platinum. It takes the the Nier Studio Kavia. I, th- I think it's Kavia. I don't know if they've got a different studio working on it. But it takes both studios and blends them together with that gameplay from Bayonetta and Wonderful 101 that... And I th- I think specifically Metal Gear Rising. Yeah. It feels a lot like Metal Gear Rising. Like like a simplified control scheme Metal Gear Rising. Wouldn't there that is, be nice? There is so much customization, you don't even know how deep that rabbit hole go- goes. You can go into the options menu and you can find your, your cyborg parts. And one of those parts is your power chip. Which you can remove if you want to. But you will die instantly. Because you are a cyborg and you need your power chip. Ugh. But they give you that option to take it out. Isn't that <laughs> so weird? Pointless. It's so bizarre. It's so near. It's so good. So check out the Near Automata demo. I-, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's up on the PlayStation Network right now. It's free for everyone. That is one of my most anticipated games for next year. I okay. Man, I could talk about Near all day. And will. No, you so might this- as well. No, 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 no. You might as well talk about the next one. Uh, okay. Uh, the next one uh, was Riv- River City Tokyo Rumble. Uh, that is a game for the 3DS. Uh, if you remember um, River City Ransom on the NES. Yeah. Um, or, jeez, uh, what? Well, that's probably the biggest one that I can point to because that, yeah. I think that was the only other one that might have come out uh, that wasn't volleyball related. Yeah. So it's a, I guess, a 2D sprites on a 3D plane where you play as a bunch of high school kids who go out and just beat each other up mm-hmm. and it feels like if you took yakuza and put it into a nest game that is the best example of what i can tell you this game is like <laughs> it, it is very shonen inspired it, it's base it feels a lot like the original river city ransom uh to to a fault yeah but th- there is so much depth to this weird game it's a two button control scheme and you can assign like different books to give yourself special skills like hurricane kicks or the bicycle kicks like there's a lot of depth to this side-scrolling action brawl. Yeah, it doesn't look like much, but... It, there's a lot of depth to it, and it's just fun. It, it's just one of those games that's like... You know, we're just high school kids on a, you know, a, an adrenaline-filled adventure. Okay. It, it's good. It's just, it's just wholesome fun. I like it. <laughs> All right. Do you want to talk about that last game? I mean, your list, and I'll talk about mine. Okay, sure. Uh, I actually have two games left on my list. What? So... I will talk about the first one. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, I won't go too far into it because this is one that I haven't actually put oh, a I lot see. of time into. Oh, I see. You were supposed to pick five games and you put six. I know. I just forgot to delete one. So now we get to talk about both. Uh, Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Very good I game. Mean, this Mankind and this Rumor Divided. Have not, have not played through more than the tutorial so far. Want to get back to it. Love the aesthetic. Love the characters. Love the world. A waste of money. It was a bit of a waste of money because now it's like 30 bucks. Um, Ooh. yeah, I know. Trust well, me. You alternatively could play something for free. I know. Trust me. Um, like, um, let it die. Yay! Is that okay. You finally caught I, on. I caught on to your, uh, Segways. in your segue here. Um, let it die was announced at the PlayStation experience. <laughs> Surprise. Yeah. It is by a uh, grasshopper studio. It's a weird mix of 
like action RPG and uh, it, it's a free to play Dark Souls like game. Yeah. It's, it's, it's I think ext- we've talked about it before. I think game. we have. It's extraordinarily difficult. Um, it, it's one of those games that you put into it. The more you put into it, the more you get out of it. It's quirky. It's super quirky. It's really bizarre and weird. I highly recommend checking it out. It's completely free. You can go a long time before you need to put any money into it. What the, is the paywall exactly? The paywall is if you die and your character is like got a lot of money on them, has uh, a lot of equipment that you don't want to lose. Like say you've got like the best equipment and you die. Oh yeah, I, I remember now. This stole yeah. the idea from my book. Yes. So you you can buy uh, de- life insurance in game. Yeah. And it's like I think it's only a couple of bucks, and then so you buy like death tokens, and then every time you die, you just pay one, and then you respawn instead of being permadeath. Yeah. But what the game doesn't tell you is, first of all, how weird it is. But you can like roguelikes. If you can clear a floor out, you head back down to the base floor. You can pump your character with uh, you know stat points in order to upgrade them, and then that persists, I believe. Okay. So. Uh, I don't know. Let Let It Die is really good. I haven't put a lot of time into it, but from what I have, it's stuck with me. It's like the first time that I've played a free to play game that I actually feel like is worth it. Yeah. Like I don't. I don't. I'm, I'm not even running out to put money into it. I I don't even recommend putting money into it. I have so many tokens that I could use to bring myself back to life that the game just gives you mm-hmm. every day that you play. You check in. You get a free gift. Yeah. And as far as I can tell. Those gifts stack from the previous days. So at any time, you can just go and reclaim them. Oh. Yeah. So I've got like, I've got, I think at this point, 25, maybe 30 respawn tokens. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I, I'm good for ever. So was this game like partially funded by Sony? I don't, I don't think so. I think this was made all by, uh, or it was published by Gung Ho. But how are they going to make money? If... Life insurance. Yeah, but... If... They, they, I think they, they expect to get a few whales on board with it. And oh. make, I don't know if they... I don't know if the game opens up more later and sells you vanity items, or maybe it sells you specific blueprints for things that you can use. Okay. But uh, as of right now, it's... it's Get just, everyone hooked. Yeah. And then... It's it's really good. Jack if, up the price. Yeah. If, I, I just recommend checking it out. I, I don't want to oversell it, but... It, it's, it's free. How it can is, you oversell it, it, free? It's, it's super janky. It is like, if, if Dark Souls controlled like shit, that would be Let It Die. <laughs> <laughs> but it's worth it. If... if you're looking for something that's just there. Let it die has it. And I think that was it. What? No, no, no. I want to talk about okay. this one last game. Okay, what's, what's this one last okay. game? I had to look up a list of games that came out this year in order to make my list. That's a few games I played that came out this year. Yep. This year. Um, yep. But this one came out at the beginning of the year, so it counts. Okay. Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley is... I th- when did it come out? It was January? January or something like that. It was really early on in the year. Yeah. But it still counts. Okay. It is like if Harvest Moon was out today. Well, it is out today. But if Harvest Moon was actually good nowadays. Yeah. And it. But then also on the PC, unfortunately. And PS4 now. Now I know, but I have it on the PC. Yeah. And now I can't justify buying it on the PS4. That's fair. But, oh, it's so good. It's like if Har- there's a story in there and it, it's, it, it's a good story. And okay. It's weird. Let, let me put it like this. From what I've seen of it... St- Excuse me. Stardew Valley looks like what a fan of Harvest Moon sixty four has made. Uh, like it, it looks like so, sort it of. feels it's like the PlayStation. It feels like someone who grew up with Harvest Moon got what made those games special. Yeah, and then made their own version of what it. What do you know? You didn't play Harvest Moon. I have up. no. I have played a surprising amount of Harvest Moon. Oh, you say this about everything, and it's never the surprise is that you haven't played it. Oh no! I've, don't get me wrong. I haven't played a lot. But a surprising amount is like I've probably all up put in ten accumulative hours I know, I'm into sure every I'm, version of Harvest Moon. I'm, you've watched me play ten. Hours. I've I, I've I've watched you play more than ten hours. I think that's where all your knowledge comes from. No, I, I love Harvest Moon. 64. I, I I've played a lot of Harvest I'm Moon. I'm a huge Harvest Moon fan. I I used to rent Harvest Moon sixty four from the. I video played store. I played the NES one on an emulator in high school for a surprising amount. I never got super far, but I put a lot of hours into well, it. Well, the, the SNES. Wait, you said NES. SNES. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Because there was no NES one. But. Yeah, yeah. And I and I played a lot of Legend of the River King. That's a good game too. But that's not Harvest Moon. It might as well be. It's Harvest Moon if fishing was your main component. Well, some people fish a lot, but um, it's really good. At, the only thing I there was some I have some complaints with it. Like I think you should boot it back up soon because. Yeah. 
It's there, updated. I know. There is so much change since you played it last. I know, but... It I'm, is like an entirely new game. I No, it's not. I know a lot of the changes are. I've seen... I, I I read, like, every time there's an update, I read the change logs. And I it's know. Like, there's good changes, but yeah. for me, one of my main problems was the art style of characters. Okay. And that hasn't changed. Okay. I didn't like the art style in their little pictures. And uh, the characters that you can kind of marry... They they're they're lacking in personality. You get more personality. The updates have changed that once you're married. Yeah, they've added to that. But uh, as far as their little storylines go, but this is the, I think one of the first games from this developer. They're not a very. I think it might be the first. Yeah, game. they're not a very experienced developer. I would love to see them eventually get to a sequel. I I want them to do Stardew Valley sixty four. Yeah, I, again with my love of low poly and what that developer is doing, I want to see that. That could be so good. Yeah, I, I would like to see them expand on what they're doing, the story, and their their mechanic. The mechanics are solid. Yeah, that is a very well put together game. I would like to see that expanded on. Yeah, and then the characters improve. Like really, it's not that hard to improve on the characters, and it's not that hard to have better art by comparison to all the other things that are great in the game. Like, yeah. It, it they're weird oversights mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it makes me wonder if the programmer is less of a writer than they are a programmer maybe i honestly don't know again though but stellar i i, I, I really think you need to go and check out those updates because i think that you would have well, a... I've, I've read through the change oh, okay okay well there you go stardew valley final recommendation yeah i recommend stardew valley definitely right. but get it on the playstation or something because like no one wants no. to sit on the no 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 all oh, right because the updates are better on the, the PC. updates come way quicker on the pc they're way better and it has mod support. It does have mod I support. I was looking through the yeah. list of if, mods. If you don't like the art style like I don't like, you can just mod it out. You can get mods that turn all of the animals in the town into Pokemon. So, <laughs> like, there, there is... It's limitless what you can do with that game. Like, oh, it's so good. It's yeah. so good. I know there's mods that update the dialogue in some places that... Like, where I said it's kind of unimaginative. People have just fixed there, that. There, there's mods that change the art. Yeah. Like, that, that make, like, all of the town people into, like, anime people. It's great. It's yeah. so good. I, I do think that that game definitely could have used a better art style. So that's I, good. I like the art style. I'm all about it. Anyway, so that is our recommendations. That's the podcast for this week. Um, I recommend this podcast. It's pretty good. Uh, make sure that you leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. And look Yeah, why for- haven't you subscribed look, yet? Look forward to our Yakuza 0 coverage in the coming weeks. Look forward to the next Forging the Dragon. Forging the Dragon's incoming. Look uh, forward to Spoiler Cast. Spoiler Cast is incoming. Again, hit me up on Twitter or Discord if you want to get in on that. And, you know, thank you guys so much for listening. Miku thank- Review. Miku Review is See, coming. We're, we're a big channel here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, th- you know, thank you guys for listening. Thank you, everyone on Patreon, for Happy supporting New us. Year. Happy New Year. Happy 2016. 2017. No, I'm just being happy about 2016 and being super positive about 2016. <laughs> Say, damn it! 2017. I don't uh, know. I'm in a good mood. This podcast has put me in a good mood. I mean, I need to go play some more video games. I think more Yakuza is zero. <laughs> <laughs> Sucker. Mr. Shakedown is the best! Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.